okay welcome to finance cottage let's take a quick review of lesson one lesson one is about the introduction of multinational enterprise and comparative financial goals in this video we shall talk about the definition of multinational enterprise what is different about international financial management what are goals of management uh, what are the issues of corporate governance and we shall discuss currency terminology so let's start with the definition of multinational enterprise a multinational enterprise or a multinational corporation is defined as one that has operating subsidiaries branches or affiliates located in foreign countries for example if a company is located in country a and its subsidiaries or branches are working in are also working in country b c and d this enterprise or this corporation can be called as a multinational enterprise or a multinational corporation multinational enterprise or multinational corporation is also known as transnational corporation based on the idea that its ownership is dispersed internationally and these transnational corporations are different from the domestic corporation because they are managed from the global perspective rather than from the perspective of any single country the domestic corporation is managed from the perspective of uh, its own country but the transnational corporation is managed from a global perspective this is i think the main difference between the domestic corporation and uh, a multinational corporation so this exhibit 1.1 explains a uh, few points based on which we can differentiate a domestic corporation from an international corporation for example from a culture and history point of view a domestic corporation requires only to understand the culture and the history of its own country but a multinational enterprise is required to understand the culture and the history of all those countries in which its subsidiaries are working similarly domestic corporation needs only to understand the corporate governance practices of its own country but on the other side the multinational corporation is required to understand the corporate governance practices of all other countries in which its subsidiaries are working third one is i think more important is the foreign exchange risk now domestic country domestic uh, enterprise has to face the exchange risk only up to the level of its exports and its imports but a multinational corporation has to face not only the foreign exchange risk of its own imports and exports but also the imports and exports of its subsidiaries so uh, in this case uh, the international uh, corporation uh, faces a, a, a large degree of foreign exchange risk as compared to uh, the domestic corporation next one is the political risk for a domestic corporation um the the political risk is very less or it is sometimes negotiable with its political government but for a multinational corporation it is very difficult to negotiate with the political government governments of every country in which its subsidiaries are working for a multinational corporation uh it is required for a multinational it is a requirement for a multinational corporation to modify the financial theories in accordance with the country in which its branches are working for example the capital budgeting theory or uh, agency theory or a dividend policy theories uh, should be designed in accordance with each and every country in which its subsidiaries are working but for a domestic com company it has to follow the traditional financial theories applicable in its own country finally is the modification of domestic financial instruments uh multinational enterprises utilize uh a modified financial instruments such as uh options futures swaps and letter of credit and it is required for a multinational corporation to modify them in accordance with uh the the legal requirements of the country every country but for a domestic con enterprise the use of financial derivative is very limited and, uh, and restricted up to the the requirements of its own home country so there are few points on based on which you can differentiate a domestic corporation from an international corporation so let's talk about the goal of management like the goal of management of any domestic 
enterprise. <coughs> um, the goal of management of a multinational enterprise is also to maximize the shareholder wealth, but in a global perspective. Um, the 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 goal of shareholders wealth maximization is basically assumes the 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 market efficiency so if the market is efficient we can call that we can say that the shareholder wealth maximization should be the ultimate goal of the management but what if the if the 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 market is not efficient then there is another model which is known as stakeholders capitalism model which explains the goal of management and how it can achieve that goal finally is third one is some operational goals of multinational enterprises so let's talk about these goals one by one so if the market is efficient then the shareholders wealth maximization should be the ultimate goal what is the mean of market efficiency uh, let's understand the market efficiency first here in this second paragraph an equity share price is always correct because it's capture all expectation of returns and risk as perceived by the investors. This says that if the market is efficient, the share prices will represent the best available information of the market into the share price. The share prices will quickly incorporate new information into it. This means that if the market is efficient, the share price will represent the performance of a corporation if the corporation is doing good then the share price will increase on the other side the share price will decrease and what is the sh wealth maximization process now the wealth of the shareholder is the return the shareholder gets the return of the shareholder is can uh, is either the capital gain or the dividends or can be both so the ultimate goal of the finance manager is to maximize the shareholder's return or in other words is to maximize the capital gain and the dividends of the shareholders. So if the finance manager is successful in increasing the return means it is successful in increasing the capital gains or the share prices. This means assuming the market efficiency the, the management is doing good for, uh, for achieving the goal of the shareholder's wealth maximization. But if the market is not efficient or you cannot say anything about the efficiency or inefficiency of, of the market, then there is another model which is known as stakeholders capitalism model. This says that there are some other stakeholders which are more powerful than the controlling shareholders. These can be the labor unions and the government intervention. If the labor unions are more strong, they can influence the management policy. Uh, and if there is a government intervention, then also government can control the performance of of uh, of uh, a corporation. So that is the reason that stakeholders capitalism model does not assume the equity markets to be the efficient the efficient markets or inefficient market. It has nothing to do with the efficiency or inefficiency of the market because the firm financial goals are not exclusively shareholders oriented but on the other side they are constrained by other stakeholders so what actually stakeholders capitalism model says according to the stakeholders capitalism model it assumes that the long term loyal shareholders those typically with the controlling interest should influence the corporate strategy rather than the temporary portfolio investors it means that the to influence the the management policy is the right of the long term shareholders rather than the short term temporary portfolio investors so if the long term shareholders are influencing the policy of of the corporations the corporation will definitely work for the benefit of the shareholders Next one is the operat operational goals of multinational enterprise. There could be three goals or three objectives for a multinational enterprise. First one is the maximization of consolidated after tax income. Second one could be the minimization of the firm effective global tax burden. And third one is correcting the position of firms, income, cash flows and available funds as to country and currency. And but these three goals are frequently incompatible in that 
the pursuit of one may result in less desirable outcome in regards to another this means that if you are going to increase your income there's a chance that you are going to increase your tax burden as well so achieving these three simultaneously would be a critical goal for for the management of a multinational enterprise